the converted man here. It's the converted man. The converted. The converted. The converted. The converted. The converted. The converted. The converted man here. So a lot of atheists have been claiming on my Facebook page that they don't need to defend their position because their atheism is simply a lack of belief. And since it's a lack of belief, they don't need to defend it. Now that's pretty absurd, so I decided to make a meme about it. When atheists claim that their position is neutral and requires no justification because they simply lack a belief. By that logic, a belief that cars have no maker is neutral and requires no defense since it, is, since it is simply a lack of belief in car makers. Oh, come on already. What kind of stupid, moronic idiot would sit there and say, atheists have the burden of proof? I disbelieve we landed on the moon. I don't need to support that as it's a null statement. Since it's a null statement, I made no positive claim, thus I don't need to prove anything. Hey, uh, Infinite Hope, you should believe that we landed on the moon. Prove to me that we landed on the moon. Okay, um, well, we have this historical... No, history, can't, can't trust history. What? <laughs> that fast? Uh, I didn't even get my foot in the door. Yet this is the sort of debate that I hear when talking about God. Well, you can't prove God using science. Really? Are you sure? Yeah, pretty sure. Okay, you might be right. But you can't disprove God using science either. That is to say, we can't make a positive or a negative claim against God using science. Can we do that in philosophy? Sure. Okay. Once you've admitted that, we can at least have an honest discussion. What's happening here is atheists are saying, No, because you can't prove it in science, it's not true. But that's a positive claim. How do you know it's not true? Remember, scientists at one point disbelieved that black swans actually existed. And when they discovered a black swan, they realized, Oh, just disbelieving in something doesn't mean that it's not real. It simply means we have yet to discover it. What I would suggest is we do not have the mechanism in science to test the spiritual realm or the realm of God. One day we might invent such a machine to do that. Right now, as of today, we don't have that machine. Perhaps that machine is going to be built years after we die. What if you missed out in the meantime on the subjective experience of your spiritual life or God? What's worse is what if there's an objective God that we could point to and do science on or discover that actually did exist? The objective God I would suggest is Jesus Christ of Nazareth. We can do objective science on Jesus. However, my point remains that I made at the start of this video and that I've entitled this video, Atheists Make a Positive Claim. They do this because they go on the attack against Christianity in particular. I haven't seen an atheist debate any other religion so far, and if you know of such a debate, I'd be very interested in it. It seems that the atheists are going primarily after Christianity and leaving all the other religions that they also claim are wrong out of the picture. Christianity seems to be a big threat to atheism. Perhaps because it's the only one they need to disprove since it's the only true one. Until next time, peace out. Awkward. Ah. Uh. Oops. Alright, I really do apologize for making you listen to all of that. Uh, I put up an annotation, so if you wanted to skip through it, you, you could. There's two reasons I 
put the entire video there. One is I put it up on April Fool's Day. It got like two people with it, like they didn't know that I was joking around. I I did actually make this video. This is a video I did have on a channel called Infinite Hope way back when, and these are thoughts and feelings that I really did have. The second reason, so I wanted to make sure that people knew it wasn't, you know, how I feel now. The second reason is because a lot of what I said way back when is what Once Forgiven Now Free is currently saying. So I want to, if I can, reach out a hand to Once Forgiven Now Free and say, I understand. I understand where you're coming from. I understand, and I've been there, and I have proof that I've been there. That video of me, as Infinite Hope, talking about this stuff, is proof that I was where you are now. Hopefully he won't know true Christian me or something like that, but I was a Christian, and I really believed in God, and I really believed in a lot of things. Now, as I made my journey through YouTube, I couldn't help but learn certain things. And one of the things I did learn was that I was wrong about the burden of proof. It isn't on the negative claim, and it can't be on the negative claim, no matter what that negative claim is. And secondly, I learned that there was a big difference between a statement of belief and a statement that is made to sound like it is fact. So a statement that says, I believe in leprechauns, you have absolutely no burden to shoulder. None. Because it is a belief statement. It is something that you personally think is true. You don't have to prove that you believe that it's true. You don't have to prove that it is true in reality. All you're saying is that you believe that. A different statement, one that does carry a burden of proof, is there are unicorns. That is a statement about reality. That is a statement that needs to have some proof given for us to think that it's true. And if you're unwilling or unable to provide anything for that statement, then we should be skeptical about that statement. So, once again, just to make sure that Once Forgiven Now Free gets it, I hope that he does, there's a difference between a belief statement and a statement that says X is true versus I believe X is true or I don't believe X is true and or there is no X. There, there's a difference between those statements. And there's also no burden when it comes to making a negative position sort of claim. A universal negative cannot be proven, period. There's simply no way to do it. You cannot prove that there are no aliens. It's not possible. And there's counter reasons to think that there are aliens. Could you prove that aliens have never come to Earth? Well, Sort of, but not really. You can give good reasons why we shouldn't think that that's the case, but you can't really prove it, quote-unquote. You can argue against it. The burden is on the one that makes the positive claim. If you want to say aliens came to Earth, you need to show that aliens came to Earth in a way that is logical, reasonable, testable, verifiable, etc. And if you're unwilling or unable to do so, then we get to be skeptical of your claim. And in fact, we must be skeptical of your claim. So, in the unlikely chance that Once Forgiven Now Free actually listens to this video in its entirety, I want to offer you, personally, my hand in understanding. I disagree with your points, and I've explained a little bit of why, but I'll go through your video and explain in more detail why your points are wrong. So I want to address a, a common criticism. Alright, this one came up time and time again. And as you can see, 68 atheists liked it. So obviously, it's a common belief among atheists. So this guy said, The fact that cars have makers is demonstrable and backed by irrefutable evidence. 
when you can point me to similarly compelling evidence for the existence of God, I'll have no problem accepting it. And he goes on to say, your analogy is incredibly stupid, blah blah blah. But he actually misunderstood me. So what atheists did here is they actually misrepresented my position. I'm not even comparing the amount of evidence for car, maker, car makers versus the amount of evidence for God's existence. I'm merely showing that just because you lack a belief in something, that doesn't mean that that position is neutral or requires no justification. Now, as this user admitted, there's a lot of evidence for car makers, and so therefore, you know, that's the neutral position. If you want to believe that cars don't have a maker, that no one made them, then obviously that's a position that requires justification. You better be able to back that up because there's simply no evidence that cars can form by themselves. But once forgiven, now free, you have made an analogy in the meme that you attempted to create here. You said that cars and car makers are equivalent and or similar to that there's a god and that we are the things that God made or that everything is the things that God made. It is a fair criticism to point out that this is a faulty analogy, which is what you agree to. You say, well, but that wasn't my point. Then your analogy sucked and you need a better analogy. Now, my analogy as Infinite Hope was going to the moon. We have ample evidence that we went to the moon, but one could be skeptical of it, and some people are skeptical of it. That's not reasonable skepticism, but nonetheless, they do hold that position. Since it's a position of belief, they, if they make the statement, I believe we did not go to the moon, they have no burden of proof to shoulder. It is something that I would not agree with. It is something that nobody has to agree with because it is a position of belief. The moment that they say we did not go to the moon is the moment that they have the burden to show that that's true in some way, shape, or form. They have to show compelling evidence that we didn't go to the moon, that it was fake, that it's a forgery, what have you. There has to be some sort of way to demonstrate that that's the case. Now, if you're willing to admit that your analogy is faulty, then perhaps you need a better analogy. If there isn't as much evidence for God as there is for the maker of a car, then why use that analogy at all? Come up with a different analogy that suits what you're trying to give a description of in a better way. It's a fair complaint to make, and you miss the point that the atheist was making. They're making the point that they don't believe in God because there isn't enough evidence for God. Instead of addressing that criticism, you complain that they missed your point, which is your fault because you gave a bad analogy. Now, what about the existence of God? Where is the evidence? Well, Christians can provide a lot of positive evidence for the existence of God, whether it's the moral argument or the ontological argument or the teleological argument. All right, so here's another thing that I learned during my journey on YouTube as a Christian, and I still was a Christian as I learned it, and I was able to maintain my Christianity even though I had learned this. So I'm hoping that you too, once forgiven, now free, can learn this information. Now, whether you maintain your Christianity or not, is a side note. But nonetheless, debates are not evidence. Okay? An argument is not evidence. Debate is not evidence. An argument isn't evidence. It's not evidence. It's not evidence. It is not evidence. And in case you missed it, it's not evidence. Okay? Even if I have a logically coherent argument from start to finish, perfectly formatted, perfectly done, no logical fallacies, period. It is not evidence that the conclusion is actually real. All it is, is that we now have no logical reason to be skeptical of the conclusion. There's also logical arguments that are not coherent. 
there's a difference between the two as well, which is a little bit more complicated, so I'll put it this way. All men are mortal. Socrates was a woman, therefore Socrates is immortal. There's a problem there. It's formatted correctly, but there's a problem because Socrates wasn't a woman and because women too are mortal. But the argument doesn't allow for those possibilities in it, thus it acquires logical fallacies. So although it's formatted correctly, the conclusion is one we have to be skeptical of. So it is possible to format an argument syllogistically speaking correctly, but have multiple logical fallacies in it and have a conclusion that just is a non sequitur, doesn't follow from the premises. I could say either I'm human or it's raining outside, I am human, therefore it's not raining outside. The, the two aren't necessarily linked. There's no association causation, yet the argument's perfectly formed. It's just not logically coherent. So in order to identify if it's logically coherent, we have to check every premise and see whether or not it contains a logical fallacy. And if it does, then we get to be skeptical of the conclusion. Now, the interesting thing about logic is you can have a conclusion that's true Yet, the argument itself is invalid, and thus you would have to be skeptical of the conclusion. Either my light is on, or lobsters exist. Lobsters exist, therefore my light is off. Well, actually, my light is on, and lobsters do exist, so there's a fallacy somewhere in the argumentation, and I have to find that fallacy. It is true that my light is on, but nonetheless, somewhere one of the premises was wrong. So although it was constructed correctly, it wasn't logically coherent. It's a bit tricky. It might take you a bit of study to really fully comprehend that. It certainly did for me. I had to read multiple times different uh, textbooks on it, different things on the web about logic, before I really understood the difference between a logically formatted argument and a logically coherent argument. Nonetheless, Regardless of what type of argument you have, it isn't evidence. If an argument could be evidence, then I would simply make a logical argument that I have a million dollars, and I would actually spend the time and energy to try to make it a logically coherent argument if possible, so that suddenly, magically, I'd have a million dollars. But an argument is not and cannot be evidence. Or even the evidence from the resurrection of Jesus, Okay, so here's where we're going to definitely disagree because part of my deconversion was due to the fact that I went looking for the evidence of the New Testament stories, the Old Testament stories, and I found nothing. Now, you're going to disagree with that. You're going to think that there's plenty of evidence and you're probably going to have some sort of cognitive dissonance going on in your head where you say, no, no, th there's evidence, it's true, it's real, you just, you're an atheist, you just want to stand, blah, you know, and you're going to have some sort of thing going on in your brain that makes you want to protect your idea, and again, I totally understand that, I was there myself, but the truth of the matter is, there is no evidence for anything regarding Jesus at all. The only thing we have is a single writing that happens far after the event, and the dating isn't as important as some make it out to be. It could have happened immediately after if we had the earliest writing that's like immediately after the event. It still wouldn't matter because you have modern instances of people believing made up ideas rather quickly. Uh, the Mormon church and their book that was just created out of thin air by uh, their leader, uh, Joseph Smith. I mean, he just made up a Bible and people bought into it. And then you have, you know, say the Church of Scientology where you have, you know, the book of uh, Dianetics and whatever ever book they have and people just bought into it. And, and you have other modern examples of people claiming to be the resurrection or the reincarnation of Christ or other godly type figures and people just believing them because people believe in all sorts of weird things without any evidence. That's just how some people are. 
there are gullible people. Not to say that you're gullible, but this is a cultural phenomenon that has been incorporated into our society for so long that many people just don't question it. Many people don't do the research into it, and as a result, many people continue to believe it's true. But I wasn't satisfied with just thinking that it was true. I wanted to find out if it was true. And when I did the real research with real objectiveness, I found absolutely nothing to support it. The writing about Jesus happened some... Eight, the earliest one we have is some 80 years, 70 years afterwards. The other three Gospels don't count because they're copies of that one. So it's not like we have four separate accounts. We only have one account. We have no other historical writings about Jesus at all. And the ones that I suspect that you might point to, like Josephus and Penny the uh, Elder or Younger, whichever one he is. Uh, Josephus is a known forgery. And the only times that anybody mentions anything at all is about Christians themselves, not about Jesus or any of the deeds that he supposedly did. Not during, not before, during, or after the events of Jesus did any historian or any political writer or anyone that had written anything notate any event that would have been noticed by somebody. The silence is deafening. There's no earthquake recorded. The sky getting dark wasn't recorded. The shroud tearing wasn't recorded. These are events that somebody would have noticed and written down. But nobody did. And then there's more reasons than just those to doubt the Jesus stories. And that's before we even add to the problem that it is written very similar to pagan stories of the same time. It is in the same genre, and it falls under mythology because it has mythological elements, people doing supernatural things, and we haven't proven that the supernatural is possible. And just saying, well, but if there's a god, then it's possible, is circular reasoning. Now, I know you will disagree with me on all of these points, and you'll insist that there's proof for Jesus, but if you actually look into the matter for yourself, you'll find out there isn't. But I strongly suspect that you won't look into it, and you'll just insist that there is evidence, despite the fact that there isn't. Or, you know, watch any debate by William Lane Craig. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, why? Okay, so, full disclosure, I, as a Christian, hate to admit this, actually liked William Lane Craig. But then I learned logic. Now I hate William Lane Craig because every single one of his arguments are old, worn out, tired, been debunked multiple times by multiple people, and are full of logical fallacies as well as bad science. William Lane Craig is a one-trick pony. He sounds sophisticated, but he's not. Now... I lost my love of William Lane Craig the moment I learned logic, so I would implore you once forgiven, now free, learn informal logic. Where he can defend about half a dozen arguments for the existence of God. Uh, no, he can't, but again, learn informal logic. Alright, there's no lack of evidence for the existence of God. Once forgiven, now free, you provided zero evidence for the existence of God. Even if you could demonstrate that Jesus died in a tomb and then later came back to life, that's evidence that something bizarre and mysterious happened. But it isn't evidence for God. Now, I am a little less skeptical than most skeptics out there. If somebody could, on demand, create a miracle within a laboratory conditions, that would make me a little less skeptical that miracles were possible. But for whatever reason, God just isn't in the business of doing miracles on demand. I've said repeatedly, my personal uh, favorite miracle would be for God to levitate my stuffed cat, Fluffy, into the air for a few minutes so I could observe it. And that whoever was praying to their God that that would happen, I would be a little less skeptical about that God's existence, but for whatever reason, God just simply won't levitate my stuffed cat Fluffy. Another example I could give is I've told people to pray that 
uh, Africa would receive mana from heaven and clean drinking water and that AIDS would be cured instantaneously. And that whoever prayed for that, if it happened the moment that they prayed for it, the moment that they finished their prayer, we found out later on, of course, that the news would report it, but nonetheless we found out that the time was exact, then that would give me very good reasons to think that that God was real and could do things. But again, for whatever reason, God won't do those things. It's almost as if God doesn't exist and or doesn't answer prayers and or doesn't have the power to answer prayers or that God doesn't care enough to answer prayers and or some combination thereof. Now what about the evidence against the existence of God? You cannot prove a universal negative nobody can. Disprove that there are goblins, orgs, and dragon. Nope, you can't prove that there isn't? Well then I guess there must be a goblin, org, dragon. No? Well, maybe, maybe the uh, burden is on me to show that there's a goblin or a dragon. If not, then we have every right to think that there is no such thing as a goblin or a dragon. Let's just shorten that to God. Oh, look at that. It, it lines up nicely. Huh. It's almost like I made it do that. That's really clever. Well, atheists don't have any. That's why they try and claim that they don't need to provide any evidence. Can you prove that there is no goblin or dragon? If not, then I'm God. Can you prove that I'm not God? If you can't prove that I'm not God, then I must be God. Makes sense to me, right? That's the sort of logic you just used, isn't it? Oh, what do you mean it's different? Why is it different? You can't prove I'm not? Hmm, think about it. Now let's think about this. If all the evidence is on the side of there being a God... You didn't provide any evidence. Provide the evidence. Then shouldn't the neutral position be theism? No, because there's really no such thing as a neutral position, although I know some atheists have tried to make the argument that atheism is the default position or whatever. I, I don't care. It's, it's a moot point to me. I don't know. I've not seen a logically coherent argument one way or the other. So if somebody has one and they want me to analyze it, I certainly will be happy to do so. In the meantime, I would say in regards to the idea that the position is theism, well, I could ruin that whole idea by saying, well, God used to exist, but it exploded in order to make our universe. That explosion is what we know as the Big Bang. See, God loved everything so much, it knew the only way to make everything possible was for it to die in a giant explosion. Now, God doesn't exist anymore, but it used to. So now I have theism, deism, and atheism wrapped up all in one nice ball. What are you going to do with that one? <laughs> Don't know. But see, I'm now a theist and a deist and an atheist with that idea. Of course, one would want me to prove any of that's true, but you know what? You need to prove that it's false first. See, that's how it works, according to you at any rate, right? And if you want to call yourself an atheist, then shouldn't you have pretty good justification for that, seeing as all the evidence points towards there being a god? I call myself a skeptic. And because I'm a skeptic, I also am an atheist and to some extent agnostic and probably some other words that fit what I am. But first and foremost, I'm a skeptic. So don't leave me out. Come on. What about the skeptics? Complain about the skeptics. Why are you so skeptical of things? Because people lie about stuff. That's why. And once again, you provided zero evidence for God. Whatever God is. In fact, you haven't even defined God or given the epistemology of God. So I don't know what the bleep you're talking about. But nonetheless, please continue. See, here's the thing. You want to claim that you don't need to defend your position by virtue of the fact that it's a lack of belief. But we know that's not true, as we saw with the car analogy. But you said earlier... I'm not even comparing the amount of evidence for car, maker, car makers versus the amount of evidence for God's existence. So by your own statement, the car analogy is invalid and a bad analogy. So why bring it up this late in the video when you've already recognized that it's a bad analogy. You guys all fell right for that trap. But nobody fell for your trap because there was no trap, first of all. Secondly, if you're going to boast about, like, a trap that you set, it's a little bit, I don't know, just doesn't 
feel Christian to me for some reason. I never did that as Infinite Hope. But see, you guys are all very quick to point out that cars do have a maker. There are people who build cars, and there's good evidence for that. And so what you're really saying is that atheism isn't, doesn't, is not a neutral belief. And in order to be an atheist, you have to be able to show that there is no good evidence for the existence of God. So this is the watchmaker argument just reduxed, which is what I did as well. No, the two aren't the same. It's a bad analogy. Stop doing the bad analogy. You know it's a bad analogy. You said it was a bad analogy. Cut it out. And so the burden of proof is on you to demonstrate that there is no evidence for the existence of God. And there are plenty of evidences, so I guess your burden of proof is that you need to show that every single piece of evidence for the existence of God is not good and wrong. Once again, it's not the burden to disprove a negative, but if you had provided any evidence, then I could give you good arguments against it. But I can't prove that it's not there because that's not a thing that anyone can do. You cannot prove, because that's the wrong phrase to use, that something isn't so. You can argue against something being so, but you can't prove it. You cannot prove that Santa Claus is not living at the North Pole. And you might say, oh, well, well, there's, of course I can. No, you can't. Nobody can. You cannot prove that reindeer cannot fly. You can prove that 99 reindeer cannot fly by pushing them off a building, but it's that 100th reindeer that could fly that you didn't push off the building that disproves your idea. Plus, really, the reindeer were just depressed, and that's why they fell to their death. And also, they don't like to show off in front of people, and they prefer to die rather than show off. And that's why they didn't take off into flight. You cannot prove a universal negative. Nobody can do it. Stop it! That's your burden of proof. So again, if you want to claim that no one builds cars or makes cars, you better have a good reason. But that analogy failed, and you know that that analogy failed. And if you want to claim that there is no creator, that there is no God, then again, you better have a good reason. Ah, I do have lots of reasons. Good, subjective, but I do have lots of reasons. I don't know if you would consider them good or not. But again, once forgiven, now free, on the off chance that you have listened all the way to this point, you might have noted a, a bit of irritation, maybe some sarcasm on my part, and hopefully that won't distract you from that hand that I still am offering you that says, I understand where you're coming from, because I too was where you are. Now, don't get me wrong, I don't care if you stay a Christian or deconvert. It doesn't matter to me. Fine, stay a Christian. Go ahead doesn't matter to me. What does matter to me is that you learn logic, in this case informal logic, because once you learn informal logic, your arguments will get much, much better. And perhaps you will do the investigation into the history and find something that I missed when I did my investigation and be able to present that evidence to me for re-examination. If you're unwilling or unable to do those things and instead continue to use these poor arguments with logical fallacies over and over again, then you leave me no recourse than to continue to be skeptical. If you care about my or anyone else's salvation, then make the effort to be an actual logically minded person who is willing to question whatever it is they hold most dear, in this case God, do the research, learn informal logic, and come back and present actual evidence if you find any, or at the very least, some sort of test, and if you can find no test and no evidence, at least provide a logically coherent argument. And unless and until you do any of those, we must continue to be skeptical of your conclusions. Wait, is it too late to change my mind? I want to call myself a lobsterist. Can I, can I do that? It's too late? Oh, man.